well, moving on to um, the last talk before our coffee break. Um, it's a little bit more of a toxic talk, so trigger warning. Um, we have Udi up with the Perfect Storm full node backed mobile lightning wallets. Okay, hi, I'm, I'm not that toxic, I'm not that bad, okay, don't, don't be scared. Um, so this talk, my name is Udi Wertheimer, and this talk is called The Perfect Storm, and it's about, well, I'm going to try to kind of convince you that maybe it's going to be uh, easier than it was in the past for mobile lightning wallets to allow users to have the security of a full node on their phone. Maybe it's going to be easier than it sounds. So, um, well, let's, so you guys know Peter McCormack, he, he's hosting one of the most popular Bitcoin podcasts. And uh, recently, um, he had this tweet storm, he's calling it uh, Nodegate, um, and people got really triggered by this. So he basically admitted that he never ran or never tried to use a Bitcoin full node ever, even though he's like very big on Bitcoin. And people were like going crazy, why not? You have to use a full node, why didn't you use it? It's easy, you should be able to figure it out. And, um, and he basically said, well, you think that it's easy, but is it really easy to install it on, on whatever I have? And, and what does it even do? What do I get from it? How, do I, am I, how am I going to configure it to make the most of it? It's not as simple as we think. I mean, maybe we in this room feel like it's easy, but for a lot of people, it's not really trivial. And he says that people who think that it's easy, they live in a bubble. So I don't know if we live in a bubble or not, but, but yeah, it's, it's probably not as easy as some of us think. So can we do better for Peter? And, and really, can we do better for everyone? That's for most people. Um, so. If we want to do better, I think that what we probably want to do is to have this way to run a full node that is you know, seamless to the user. The user doesn't need to know about it even existing, and definitely doesn't want it to, to the node to ask him questions about how we're going to set it up and to have to configure it and so on. And you probably want just one button to click and to have it work and, and not care about it anymore. Um, so I think this kind of sounds like a mobile app. I, maybe the big difference between desktop apps and mobile apps is that desktop apps are those, you know, they're just, just generic, general purpose things that do a lot of stuff, while mobile stuff, uh, apps are usually focused on a very specific task that the user wants to achieve. And maybe that's why users are really attracted to mobile apps these days. They're just simpler to grasp. Um, so maybe in the mobile setting, we can do something better. Um, and I'm just going to note that most of what I'm going to say is more relevant to Android, less to iOS. iOS is more restrictive, even though it's getting better. So maybe with time it will be relevant for iOS too. <coughs> so when we're asking why are we going to use a full node, why should we use a full node, people usually think of um, multiple reasons. I have them listed there. So who would agree with the statement that we um, we, users should run their own full nodes in order to support the network. Who would agree with that statement? Okay, so thank you. I don't particularly agree with it, so I'm going to scratch that off. I mean, I don't know what it means to support the network. I'm not sure what it says, um, but whatever it means, I think that if a user is going to run a full node, he's going to do it for their own selfish reasons, not in order to satisfy anyone. Um, with regards to store the blockchain, again, I'm not sure why a user would particularly want to store the blockchain. Um, you're mostly interested in your own transactions, not transactions by anyone else. So I'm going to scratch that off too. And, um, and well, it's true that nodes propagate transactions. They propagate transactions for everyone. But again, as a user, you don't care about propagating someone else's transactions. And definitely, to propagate your own, to broadcast your own transactions, you don't have to be a full node. You just need to connect to a full node and use someone else to broadcast them. So that's probably not a good reason either. Um, so seriously, okay, so why do we need a full node? Um, so probably the biggest reason, the, the most obvious one, is to verify incoming transactions. Someone sends you some coins, and you want to make sure that, you know, you really, uh, there are really coins, and that's counterfeit. They're not, you know, they, they adhere to the Bitcoin rules. So you need the full node to really be sure of that. Um, and the other reason, which is, a little counterintuitive is just to be notified about the fact that you received a transaction. So actually, the Bitcoin protocol doesn't include any way to let, uh, you know, if Alice sends some coins to Bob, she doesn't tell Bob, listen, I'm sending you coins. She just expects that Bob will scan the network and find the transaction that relates to him. So there's no way to notify Bob about a transaction that's coming in. So that's another thing that the full node would do for a user. Um, but you might say, OK, but we don't need a full node for that because I already have a mobile wallet or a hardware wallet and I don't use a full node and I 
do verify transaction rights and, and I do get notified about transactions, so what's the full node for? So that's true, but actually if you're not using your own full node, then probably someone else is verifying your transaction for you. You're not really verifying it by yourself. Either you're connecting to some service provider or to some other node, and in a way, you're probably trusting them a little bit. So that's one problem. And the other problem is that you leak some data um, because you're letting know some third party what are the transactions that you care about. So you're leaking some data about yourself and use some privacy. Okay, so maybe you're convinced that you should use a uh, full node on your, um, for, you know, for whatever you're doing with Bitcoin. But you might say, okay, but Udi, listen, my phone has limited processing power and it has limited storage. I can't like have a full node on there. So it's true, but actually it's getting better. So modern phones, even the cheaper ones, have pretty good processors and it's clearly getting better. Um, so really even the cheapest phones available today can have like really good processors. And storage is increasing too and it's not very expensive. And well, another nice thing about it is that you don't have to have a lot of storage. So um, as we said, we don't need to really store the blockchain. What you want to have is to keep track of the current UTXO state in the network. That's about five gigs of space that you're going to need. So that's becoming trivial in, in, in mobile. I mean, to, and it will get better. Another problem is bandwidth. So you'll have this mobile plan with limited data. You're not gonna have unlimited data that's probably gonna stay like that. Um, <coughs> sorry. And, and you also might have limited connectivity, so maybe sometimes you don't have reception at all, um, so that's kind of a problem. Another problem is your battery life. You don't want a uh, full node chewing away um, battery power. Um, so to both these problems, maybe what we can do is find a way to only run the full node when we really need it, which maybe we can defer most of the things that we need from our full node to a time where we have Wi-Fi and a time where we have um, um, battery um, the charger plug it in so we're not on battery power and we can't expect users to make adjustments to do that but maybe we can do it for them so I'll start with what we can do today which is very simplistic um, you might have heard of AB core which is um, well basically it's a, it's a Bitcoin core and Bitcoin decompiled for Android you can use it on on an Android device um, it's started by Lawrence Nahum, who you might know from uh, Blockstream and Green Address. And you can download it like with one click on Google Play or on F-Droid and just start it and it sets up a full node to you with sane defaults. But <laughs> the thing is, it's, it's just a full node. You, so you installed it, you run it, now you have a full node, but now what? So there are some creative ways that we know that users have been using this. Um, who here has like an old phone at home in the drawer that they're not using? Okay, so quite a lot of people, right? Um, we, 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 we replace phones quite often. So instead of throwing them out, um, you can install AB Core on it, have it constantly connected to, um, to just your charger and to Wi-Fi, and it will just sync, and it acts kind of like, you can think of it like uh, a Raspberry Pi that has Bitcoin core, uh, Bitcoin core on it, and you connect to it remotely, but you don't really have to set anything up, it's, it's kind of ready for you. Um, so this, this is fun, this is nice. I'm not sure that you know, a lot of normal people are going to do that. So can we use this on our main phone, uh, not a, a, some old phone at home? I guess we could, but then we would have some problems. One of them is that we would need to verify um, incoming transactions. In order to do that, we need to first of all be synced, first of all finish the initial block download, right? Um, that could take like a long time on a phone, at least a few days probably, um, so it's not great. And if, if you want to get notifications on new um, transactions, that means that the node has to keep running even after it's finished the initial syncing process. So that's not a great experience. It's possible, by the way, you can do it, but it's, it's not a great experience because it's still going to take away from your battery power and so on. So can we do better? Um, I think so. One thing we can do, and I'm still talking on, on, about Bitcoin on layer one, not, not even Lightning. We can sync um, only when we're charging the device. Um, and Android supports that. It lets you only start the full node when, when, when the device is charging. And that way, you know, you have better experience uh, in that regard. Um, for anything that's, and, and well, I guess, sorry. I guess the thing about 
I th the thing about syncing when you're charging is that you almost always almost ready. You well, your full node is almost always ready because it's synced at night or maybe a few nights ago. And then when you need it, you start it up. It only has to catch us up for a day or two. So it's almost ready always. Um, and another thing you can do is a sort of assisted initial block download instead of downloading everything and validating on your phone, you're going to take something like um, a laptop or a desktop that you have. You're going to use some simple tool on that desktop to download and verify the old transactions and have th that simple tool just transfer the current state to your phone. And then the phone doesn't have to do the heavy lifting. And you only do this once, so it's not that bad. We need a good user experience for that, but it's, it's possible. The last one is something I call wait for deposit. So, <coughs> sorry, so what it would mean is the wallet that you're using might have some idea about the fact that you're expecting a transaction. Because when you want to get a transaction, you're probably you're going to ask for a new address from your wallet, so the wallet knows that you're expecting something. Um, and at that point, the wallet can start the full node and start syncing it for, let's say, an hour and wait to see if you receive any transactions on, at this address. And once you do, it shuts the node down. So you don't have to have it on all the time. The, the, the wallet can have, think of some think tricks to expect when you're going to receive a transaction and only start the node then. So it's maybe better, but it's not great. But the thing is that Lightning might make this easier. So if you expect that users will mostly use Lightning on their phone, then giving them full node security might be easier than it is to give like layer one security to normal phones. So to explain this, I have to like give you a brief overview of how the Bitcoin Lightning Network works. And you would have your, you know, your Alice and Bob and, and Charlie or Carol, whatever, and they have these payment channels between each other. And what payment channel is, well, I'm kidding. I'm not going to explain the Lightning Network. This is a Lightning Conference. Imagine if every talk, everyone would explain the entire Lightning Network every time. It's insane. So no, I'm, go I'm not going to do that. But <coughs> so what do we need in order to have a Lightning wallet um, backed up by uh, a full node on your phone? What do we need from that full node? One thing that we need from the full node is to verify when we're opening and closing channels, um, because that happens only one on the main chain. <clears throat> and that would include potential breaches. If someone is trying to cheat you with an older state, you would need to find out about it. But that's it. So when someone sends you a payment on Lightning, the, the full node, the Bitcoin full node doesn't care about that. Nothing happens you know, on layer one, so the full node doesn't care. Um, <clears throat> if you need to be notified about uh, the transaction, the person who's paying you is already notifying you about it on Lightning. So you don't need the full node for that either. So you really need the full node for very small things. Um, some wallets, some Lightning wallets, are also layer one wallets. So they have also have you like the, the, the normal layer one balance on your phone. But I mean, they can use what we talked about before. So that would be something you do rarely and will be not a great experience, but OK. And you will have like the better experience on Lightning. So what exactly do you need to do when you're opening a channel? So actually, if you're opening a channel with your own funds that you already validated and confirmed, there's nothing to validate anymore. You're creating and opening a channel with your own funds. The only person who cares about confirmation is the counterparty in your channel. It's not you. So it's their problem. And they're probably a routing node. They have like a serious full node that's running 24-7. They can take care of that. And they will let you know once the channel is ready. Um, you know, that's something you definitely could do. So in that case, you don't care. Um, maybe the funds are from someone else. And some wallets are experimenting with that. We've seen some today, and there are some others too. Um, there are different ways you might open a channel with funds that are not yours. And then maybe you will trust that the, the counterparty that opened the channel with you, or maybe you won't trust it, so you would wait for a confirmation. But that's something that you know, the wallet can take, care of, can take care of and see what's the best way to do it. So that's opening channels. When you're closing channel, um, so cooperative and uncooperative closes, are pretty simple. They're not, you know, nothing urgent is going on. You can, you do want to know that it's confirmed, but it doesn't need to be right now. You can probably wait. I mean, the confirmation will take time anyway. So that would be similar to the layer one case, and the user is probably not extremely, you know, it's not extremely urgent for the user to get a, to get some response. Um, the other thing is breach protection. So you need to watch the, the chain to make sure that there's no transaction that reaches your uh, channels. Um, and that basically means that you want to have a watchtower on your phone. 
can we do that? Um, so maybe we could if we set a long time, uh, a long expiry for channels, let's say one week, maybe two weeks, um, and then we have the full node start up every night when we're charging or maybe every few nights. Um, the problem with that is that Android wouldn't guarantee that it's going to start your node every night. It might start it, you know, every few nights. Um, it might start it too late. So you're not going to know, but if it doesn't start, you might be able to send a notification to the user to let them know that something is wrong and they should open the, uh, the app. Um, and the thing is that Lightning Walls already do that. They don't do it with their own node, they do it with some remote node, but they already do this checking um, usually, you know, usually when the, the wallet is, uh, the, when the phone is asleep. So we already do that, so why not stick a full node into that as well? Um, and we can use like LMDs, Watchtower for this, or even do something simpler maybe. So what makes this awesome in, in Lightning, to sum this up? Um, the first thing is that payments are on layer two. The, the interfaces that you have with layer one are very rare, so they're never urgent. Um, the user can wait. Um, it doesn't need to know um, about channel closes immediately, so th there's a lot more flexibility there with, with closing a channel. Um, and the last thing is that we're focusing on what this specifically what the user needs. We're not trying to build this full node that does everything and will fix all of a user's problem. We're trying to, you know, find a specific need and, and, and take care of it. So that's what potentially can make this awesome. And lastly, I mean, definitely for a lot of people, definitely power users, we would want to have something like this, or even maybe even something cooler uh, at home that would be a routing node and, and it will be, you, you know, it will do a lot of things for us. But I think maybe for normal users, that's probably gonna scare them a little bit. And I guess for them, what we would really want is to make this thing disappear and just, they don't need to know that they're running a node, they don't need to care about it, they don't need to think about it, they just hopefully will have it and will just get a better experience um, without thinking about it too much. And that's it. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm, maybe I have time for a question or two. Thank you, thank you.